From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. The wait is over. On Sunday, September 12th at 10 a.m., St. Paul's Baptist Church will resume in-person worship services on our North Campus on Creighton Road only. We'll have announcements on the reopening of our other locations in the future by the grace of God. So visit myspbc.info slash reopening for more info. Connect with us for one-on-one -on -one prayer or counseling at any time during our Sunday morning worship experience. We'd love to talk with you. Join us in our virtual prayer room at myspbc.info slash prayer room. Our celebration of Life Stage Summer continues this week as we celebrate SMB. Please join us as we celebrate Imagination on August 29th. Every member has a mission. Take the next step towards yours today. Don't know where to start? Let us help you on your journey by taking a 10-minute assessment to learn and understand your gifts for your mission. Develop your gifts through our online bootcamp training and celebrate completed missions and find new ones. Lead, connect, and serve to build relationships within your team. This is how we win when you serve. Take the next step towards your mission today. Learn more at myspbc.info slash myfit. Our community fresh food distribution will be held Friday, August 27th at 29 Elm Street in Petersburg from 2 to 4 p.m. at 4247 Creighton Road in Henrico from 4 to 6 p.m. and 700 East Belt Boulevard from 4 to 6 p.m. This is in partnership with Anthem Health Keepers plus Feed More and NIA Community Development Corporation. No registration, just drive up or walk up and pick up. For questions, email outreach at myspbc.org to volunteer. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. this song for you I need someone to help me lift them up help me lift them up Jesus what more can I do to show how much I love you I need someone to help me lift them up it's just like that shut up in my bones burn inside of me something like that's crashing in my soul trying to get out of me we gonna go what we've been before, praise his holy name, so don't you, if this is praise, and I put your hands up, sing this song with me. Jesus, how I adore you, I wrote this song for you, I need someone to help me lift them up, help me lift them up. Jesus, what more can I do, to show how much I love you, I need someone to help me lift them up, help me lift them up. Throw your head back, praise the Lord with me, and then think back. You know the Lord has been so good to you, in spite of your faults and the things you do. What kind of love will live for you, fight for you, cry for you, and then die for you? Only to rise again and sit high for you. So what you gonna do? Jesus, how I adore you. I wrote this song for you. I need someone to help me lift them up, help me lift them up, Jesus. What more can I do to show how much I love you? I need someone to help me lift them up, help me lift them up. Come on and stand on your feet right now. Come on, let's praise the Lord right now. Throw your hands, let me show you how. Help me lift them up, help me lift them up. I just can't keep it to myself. He's been good to me, so, so good to me. And I don't need nobody else. My eyes were blind, help me to see. When my life was all good, it seemed my way. By my side when the times were rough That's the reason I sing this song today Jesus by my side, that's more than enough Jesus, how I adore you I wrote this song for you I need someone to help me lift them up Help me lift them up Jesus, what more can I do To 
you show how much I yeah. love you. Yeah. I need someone to yeah. be left and uh, 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 Don't judge me because I fell in love with a man, a man that got the whole world inside of his hands. I'm here for a reason, one reason only. Praise the Lord before the rocks do it for me. I ain't here to be phony and act silly. I praise the Lord because it's my responsibility. I don't know what he's done for you. But I know what he's done for me I called on him when times was trying it And he came just in time to set me free I don't want to imagine what I would be If he ain't love me with his grace and mercy When you come to church, there's no time to talk and play Just be thankful, give his name to praise All my days I make sure I lift his name high And sure I have my home above the sky uh. Come on and stand on your feet whoa, right now whoa. Come on, let's praise the Lord whoa, right now whoa. Throw your hands, let me show you how Help me Somebody say Jesus. Say say Jesus. Say say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, help me lift them up. Help me lift them up. Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, help me lift them up. Help me lift them up. Jesus. How I adore you. I wrote this song for you. I need someone to help me lift them up, help me lift them up, Jesus. What more can I do to show how much I love you? I need someone to yeah. help me lift them up, yeah. help me uh, lift them up. Uh, we here, come on, let's go. Stop front, just praise the Lord. Up in church, stop being so snobby. Say what you say, but I'ma praise regardless. We here, come on, let's go. Stop front, just praise the Lord. Up and try stop being so snobby Say what you say, but I'm a praise regardless Good morning everyone, my name is Avant Lattimore and I am in the SMB Life Stage Blueprint. I attend Old Dominion University and I am studying civil engineering. And I'm here to tell you today that God is incredible. God is amazing. God is wonderful. God is love. God is a way maker. God is a miracle worker. God is a promise keeper. God is worthy to be praised. God's goodness never fails. God's mercy never ends. God's love never stops. Today, we gather all over the world to praise and worship God, wherever you are, whatever you're in. This is your moment to join with and give God praise for what God has done for you. Good morning, my name is Joseph Williams and I'm an IB student at Fairfield Middle School. I am in the SMB Life Stage Surge. With our hands lifted in praise, let us pray. Even when we don't see you working, even when we don't feel that you're working, you never stop working in our lives and on our behalf. We praise you, O oh God, for who you are and what you are making of us. Now, both young and old lift their voices together. Now, both young and old shout their praise. Now, both young and old declare their goodness and offer our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome to SMB Sunday. I'm Nora Lee and I'm a proud part of SMB, that Surge, Merge, and Blueprint. That's our middle, high, and college students. For every young person streaming today, we invite you to become a part of us. We would love to have you join our SMB student ministry. Our ministry is a place that you can truly be your authentic self. You can email us at smb at myspbc.org and you can follow us at SPBC SMB Facebook and Instagram. You can look at our SPBC SMB website for our events and activities and we would love for you to join one of our fabulous groups as we connect on teams. Join us after this service on the team's link for our life stage after party. You don't want to miss it. You will have a chance to connect with others, play a few games like Bible trivia and a, with a chance to win a gift card. Our prayer for you today is that God would exceed your expectations for God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think or imagine according to the power that works in us. We welcome you to St. Paul's everywhere. We are touching the world with love, communicating the positive power of Jesus Christ to our generation. Out of all the places and pages where you could have paused your cursor, you stop here and we're glad to have you. There are a number of ways you can engage with us right now. If you're brand new, you can text the word NEW to 804-643-4769 and let us welcome you. 
If you're on social media, you can greet the person before and behind you in the chat with a great big old good morning. If you're at home watching on television, computer, or iPad, greet the people in your room. Or if you're physically alone, call somebody and invite them to join the worship online. If you like something, hit the like button. If you think of somebody you want to bless, hit the share button. If the message or the music speaks to you, feel free to comment in the chat and use your life stage color. My main point is this. We want to worship with you, not for you. So let's connect, let's get involved, and let's do it now. Here we go. an incredible day it is. Today we are celebrating as part of our Life Stage Summers SMB. And for the uninformed, that means Surge, Merge, and Blueprints, the three divisions of our ministry to students here in the St. Paul's Baptist Church. We are so excited about the talents, the gifts, the possibility, the potential, and the future of our young people. We hope that you will encourage your students all over the country to become involved. We would love to connect with them. You can go to our website for more information 
as we move forward in the name of the Lord. We're in a series of messages across this summer that we've been calling grown folk music based on the Psalms of scripture and looking there at themes that are often difficult and complex and require us to grow up even in our musical tastes. And I'm glad to announce today, there is a word from the Lord. Travel with me now to the textual territory of Psalm 121. Listen for a word from God as we read from the English Standard Version of the Bible. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. And I wanna tag this text with the title, Songs for the Road. Tom Cochran was a member of the Canadian Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Most of us have never heard of him. He was the front man for many years for a Canadian band named Red Rider. However, he only had one big hit, and that was during his solo career. It hit the charts in 1991 and would peak at number five on America's Top 40 Countdown. The song was then covered and ruined by Rascal Flatts for the Disney Pixar movie, Cars. The song is the quintessential road song with such profound lyrics. Listen to them. Life is a highway. I want to ride it all night long. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're going my way, I want to drive it all night long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a bevy of wisdom. But alas, the lyrics, my friends, are correct because life is a highway. Life is a journey. Life is a trip. And we need good tunes as we journey. Our text for today is a song for the road. It is traveling music. Can I ask you right up front, what's on your road trip playlist for this year? Recently, my family took a spontaneous pop-up road trip and we weren't traveling long before I landed on my road trip playlist, which always, always, always begins with Anita Baker. Our playlist blasts the soundtrack of our lives as we hit the road on vacation or daily chores, song after song, sets the tone for the miles that pass. And whether you are jamming to Jonathan Nelson, Jonathan Butler, or Jonathan McReynolds, whether you're rocking to Kirk Franklin, Kirk Whalum, or Kirk Carr, whether you nodding your head to Jay-Z, Drake, Young Boy, or the baby music, is the soundtrack of your life. I am particular when it comes to music. When winter breaks and spring becomes apparent, you will only know it in my car because there are certain songs playing and playing rather loudly. I don't know what your flow is, but my summer flow is not complete until I play Summer Madness by Cool and the Gang. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about until I hear summer breeze makes me feel fine or drifting on a memory, ain't no place I'd rather be than with you by the Isley Brothers, until I can nod in agreement with Frankie Beverly and May singing can't understand why we treat each other in this way, taking up time with the silly, silly games we play. We've got our love and no matter how it's said and done, we are one. I have a list, a long list of summer jams, traveling music, 
road songs. And strangely enough, as it turns out, traveling music is not a modern or contemporary phenomenon. For millennials, humans have written, sang, and memorized songs for the road as we trail the tapestry that is our text for today. Psalm 121 is a road song included in a compilation called Songs of Ascent. This ancient album, as it is, has 14 single tracks, starting in Psalm 120 and concluding in Psalm 134. These songs were sung by hopeful Hebrews as they traveled the road up to Jerusalem during one of the three major festivals, Passover, Pentecost, or Tabernacles, that centered their faith. They are called Songs of Ascent because the Israelites would have been traveling up spatially and geographically to the holy city of Jerusalem from the valleys and towns and hamlets below. Charles Spurgeon, a preacher of yesteryear, referred to these songs as pilgrim songs. These are ancient road songs that not only have served to inspire in the present, but reminded them of the sacred actions in their past, past moments of family and faith, past moments of healing and hope, past moments when God brought them out and took them in and brought them over. Memories contained in the melodies were handed from one generation to another. Music united them, music inspired them, music encouraged them, and music challenged them. And this is not strange to our experience, particularly as African Americans. There are songs given to us as an inheritance, not just to African Americans, but to all people. Songs that serve to unite, inspire, encourage, and challenge us, no matter who we are, no matter where we are, no matter what we've been through. We are given songs from one generation to the next as an inheritance. Songs that evoke memories and stir emotions. Fun songs like Step in the Name of Love or R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Find Out What It Means to Me. There are family songs like Sadie, Don't You Know I Love You, Sweet Sadie, or Family Reunion, or I'll Always Love My Mama, She's My Favorite Girl. And then there are faith songs like Precious Lord, Take My Hand, Lead Me On, and Let Me Stand. Faith songs like Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me. Faith songs like Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Hear My Humble Cry. Faith songs like I Woke Up This Morning With My mind stayed on Jesus. Faith songs like his eye is on the sparrow and I know he's watching me. We've got songs, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, given to us as an inheritance. You ought to go on and type right now your favorite song in the chat space and just testify. Don't worry, you got time. Type the title to your favorite song in the chat space because the beauty of Psalm 121 is that it focuses the attention of the singer on the salvation, protection, and deliverance that come from Almighty God. As my friend, Dr. Howard John Wesley says, let me give you some background so you don't miss the breakdown. I like that. Travel in their time, my friends, was tremendously different than travel in ours. We have paved roads. They did not. We have organized law enforcement. They did not. We have GPS, Google Maps, navigational systems, and ways. They did not. There, there was real imminent and present danger in traveling beyond the boundaries of where people knew you. Step over to the New Testament where even Jesus seized upon this familiar communal theme in telling the story of the Great Samaritan or a Good Samaritan where a traveler was mugged along the road, passed by by those who had the means and capacity and opportunity to help him and finally a 
assisted by an unknown foreigner whose compassion pushed him beyond the narrow confines of race, culture, faith, and tradition. People comprehended the parable of Jesus because it rang with realism. It was true to their experience. They all knew and understood that traveling was dangerous. Our highways are not dangerous in the same way unless in many quarters you are a person of color. Let me keep it 100. You know and I know it's dangerous to drive while black, ride while black, or just plain travel while black. Somebody ought to type amen to that. And that's part of the perennial relevance of the song that it has for us today. We are part of a processional of pilgrims. We are all individually and collectively on a journey through this life. We are living our lives on the road and our journey has many dangers seen and unseen. Will it be safe? Will we be injured or harmed? Will our resources last and hold out? In John Bunyan's epic work, Pilgrim's Progress, his main character by the name of Christian was a traveling pilgrim constantly confronted with danger, like the sloth of despair, doubting castle, giant despair, difficulty hill, and the valley of humiliation. Our dangerous places may have different names, but they are dangerous nevertheless. In places of danger, that's where we live, where millions of people place personal preference over collective survival by refusing life-saving vaccines. In places of obstruction, where truth is muffled and lies are loud, where limited legislatures are working overtime to restrict voter registration and participation, when bias and prejudices are baptized and then resurrected from the graves of previous eras of segregation in the name of fictitious voter fraud, these are dangerous places. This psalm is our psalm. Our journey has many perils, depression, discouragement, doubt, loss, suffering, affliction, anxiety, and so many more pierce our path. And yet this psalm reminds us in the midst of our tense, troubled, and tedious travel that all of our help comes from the Lord. Is it too early to shout on that point? The psalm begins with an intriguing interrogative. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Here it is. From where does my help come? This song has a melody and a hook. The hook that runs throughout this entire song is this. Our good God protects us on the journey. Can I back that up and say it again? Our good God protects us on the journey. This song has four stanzas that highlight the character of God and God's care for us. Scroll this scripture with me and see that the first stanza is designed to remind us that our creator is our helper. Let the whole church say and type helper. Verse one and two, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Can I unpack that passage? Because there are two ways this text has been traditionally interpreted. First of all, travelers could look to the hills as places of danger where robbers, thieves, and murderers lie in wait for the innocent, unsuspecting, naive, and unprotected. They are looking to the hills, wondering where help will come from because of the danger anticipated in the hills. A second view, interpretively, declares that travelers could be looking to the hills because the city of God, Jerusalem, atop Mount Zion, was there. And by looking there, it was an unarticulated announcement that this is where my help comes from, the presence of God to be in the place designated for the worship of God. The question then is this, are the hills the place from which to be saved or are they the place from which saving comes? 
Are the hills the harbor of danger? Or are they the promise of deliverance? I want to sagaciously suggest that both views have merits. There is danger in the hills, but there is also deliverance there. The songwriter reminds us in this lyric that only God can save us on the dangerous journey of life. And it is the will of God, encrypted in the ways of God, not to remove the dangers, but to bring about deliverance despite the dangers as we travel. Only God, somebody ought to type it, can protect us from the perils that lurk on our path. Only God can deliver us from the dangers, dysfunctions, disasters, disadvantages, deceptions that we encounter along the way. Our creator is our helper. This begs the question in our contemporary moment, let me put it to you like this, where do people look for help today? Where are you looking for help? Where am I looking for help? If we're honest, some of us would have to confess, I will lift my eyes to the job from where does my help come? Or I will lift my eyes to my family. I will lift my eyes to my friends. I will lift my eyes to the government. I will lift my eyes to my finances, my mentor, my boo, or even my own mirror because I have pluck, grit, nerve, and chutzpah. To all of those alternatives, I issue a word of caution. Let me drop this ancient word from Matthew Henry, an 18th century textual commentator. He said in his writing, we must see all of our help laid up in God in God's power, God's goodness, God's providence, and God's grace. From God, we must expect it to come. My help comes from the Lord. The help I need, the help I want, the help I desire is the help God sends. And from God, I expect it in God's own way and God's own time. If God does not help, no creature can help. If God does help, no creature can hurt. Somebody ought to grab that. Where, my friend, are you looking for help? Can I encourage you as the old saints in the church of my childhood used to encourage me? Build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Look to your creator who made heaven and earth, our creator helps us. These would-be worshipers looked to the mountains and imagined all of the dangerous animals that may lie in wait, the skulking bandits that may be hiding in the shadows. But then in this song, they rehearse their confidence in the creator, reasoning that if God created all that is, it is reasonable to assume that God controls all that is. You don't hear me. That the God who creates is the God that controls. The God who constructs is the God that commands. The God who originates is the God who orchestrates. Make it plain, preacher, I will. God is in charge. Despite the resurgence of rampant racism, despite the lack of a livable minimum wage, despite a global pandemic that has killed millions worldwide, despite the threat of variants in the presence of vaccines, God is still in charge. God will have the last word and it will be good. This theme is replete through the Hebrew hymn book, Psalm 124, verse 8. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It is the creative control of God that gives us comfort and confidence. Look to the hills with eyes of faith because our God is present passionate, purposeful, participating, and powerful. God has the same power that spoke until chaos became cosmos, night yielded to light, and weeping ceded to joy. Our creator is our helper, but there is more because the song goes on to teach our creator is our keeper. Verse three, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you 
will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Here, through the use of masterful metaphors, the songwriter paints mental pictures, as it were, to teach, tell, talk, and testify to us about how to tackle what we cannot see. What you can't see can be scary. What you can't perceive can be portentous. What you can't observe can be ominous. And yet the sacred suggestion of this song is that in a world where your steps may seem uncertain, God can and God will give you secure footing. Don't miss this because keeping one's footing in this ancient world was a big deal. They didn't have paved pathways. They didn't have concrete sidewalks. They didn't have groove running trails. They didn't have shoes with arch support that provide all day comfort. Having the assurance of solid footing was a critical matter. This theme is also telegraphed in Psalm 91, 11 and 12, where the text testifies God will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands. Why? So that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Interestingly enough, this particular passage pops up in the New Testament account of Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. The adversary suggested this scripture to Christ in his struggle to do the will of God. He misquoted and misused the text in an attempt to lead Jesus astray. But thanks be to God, Jesus didn't take the bait. Perhaps he understood even then that a text outside of its context is a pretext. Break it down, preacher, like a fraction. I will. You can make it say whatever you want it to say. Can I drop my kickstand for a moment? Don't be overly impressed because people quote scripture because that New Testament text reminds us even the devil can quote scripture. It's the modeling, not the mouthing. It's the living, not the lipping. I'm in good trouble now. Jesus knew better than to tempt God. He understood that God was in control, but he did not presume on the sovereignty of God, nor try to escape his responsibility to be discerning and to be faithful. God didn't tell Jesus what to do. Jesus had to weigh the evidence and make that decision for himself. I wish I had time to apply that to some contemporary discussions going on today so that even though the adversary misused the promise in Jesus' presence, it does not mean that the promise was not true. The promise is true and was true. Jesus, our sable-skinned Savior, had his feet kept by Almighty God. His steps were ordered by Almighty God. God kept his feet in the wilderness. God kept his feet as they walked the shores of Galilee. God kept his feet as they climbed the Mount of Transfiguration. God kept his feet as Mary washed them with her tears and dried them with her hair. God kept his feet when they were nailed to an old rugged cross on Calvary. God kept his feet so that despite being pierced, they still crushed the enemy's head. God kept his feet and stood them on the third day firmly on resurrection ground. God gives us footing and in the process God protects us. Listen to the text. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God does not tire, my friends. God needs no relief, my brothers and sisters. God requires no vacation. God keeps us continually. And a hallelujah goes right there. Do you remember the prophet Elijah's heavyweight title fight with the prophets of Baal atop Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal engaged in all types of recitations and incantations, but there was no response from their dead, deaf, and deceptive deity. At 
noon, Elijah began to mock them, saying, call him louder. Maybe he's asleep or away on vacation. And you know the story. Their deity did not respond, but God did. Yahweh did. Jehovah did. I said God did because God is ever watchful, ever seen, and ever present. Let me try and help you understand this. The CDC, you know, rec recommends that the average adult get seven hours of sleep per night. Now, a few of us need more, and the sleep-deprived among us believe we need less, but sleep is important. I don't know how you feel, but naps are the will of God concerning me in Christ Jesus in these last and evil days. And this past Father's Day, my son gave me a fit bit and what an education it has provided me about my sleeping patterns. It's reminded me and underscored for me that our bodies get weary. Our minds need to shut down. We need to reboot. But listen, not so with God. Did you hear what I just said? Not so with God. God is eternally awake, infinite in strength, boundless in access, and limitless in mercy. What a comfort it is to know that God is ever watching over us. God surveils us 24-7, 365. This is Sunday School 101 where they taught you to sing all night and all day. Angels are watching over me, my Lord. God does not slumber. God does not sleep. Maybe some of you listening to me today are like I used to be. I used to be a great long-term driver. I could jump behind the wheel and drive it like Lionel Richie all night long without blinking, but not now. A spirit of slumber has overtaken my driving skills, and I think it's contagious because my six-year-old grandson cannot stay awake 10 minutes after getting into the car. He gets in, buckles up, and within 10 minutes, he is knocked all the way out. My wife can stay up and she needs to stay up if I'm driving because I'm at the point where I've never encountered a nap that I didn't want to take. She stays wide awake and periodically on the duty, on the job, in the minute, she'll say, baby, are you okay? And she needs to do that with me. But wait, none of us need to do that with God. You can give God the steering wheel and relax because God never slumbers. God never sleeps. God never tires. God never needs a break. Now Jesus did because the gospels bear record of an occasion when Jesus was asleep in the bow of a boat and a storm broke out. Wait, Jesus slept from human weariness, but then he woke up and spoke from divine authority. He rebuked the storm and spoke peace to the stormy sea. Now, how could Jesus sleep in a storm that scared seasoned fishermen? In his book, The Wonder Working God, Arthur Jarrett Wilson wrote this. He said, Jesus slept in a storm because he was tired, but also because he was very much in control. Our God, my friends, this is the point that I'm arguing, is a helper and a keeper. Somebody can testify as you listen today that God is a keeper. Somebody should testify. You ought to type it right now. He kept me. You ought to testify that God is a keeper. God has kept us collectively through slavery, brutality, lynching, reconstruction, redlining, Jim Crow, segregation, discrimination, intimidation, incarceration, regentrification, and God has kept us individually through pandemic and problems, pressures and pain, struggles and setbacks. Have I got a witness online? We are among those who can and should testify if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be. 
God's eyes are on us continually. God is sovereignly, meticulously, incredibly in control. Here's my question for you. Are you resting today in God's care and control? Has anxiety debilitated you? Has your fear blinded you to the truth of God's sovereign reign over your situation? Remember, my friend, our creator is our helper. Our creator is our keeper and our creator is our protector. Somebody ought to just type right there, protection. Come on, I need 43 of you. I'll make 44. Type it in the chat space. God is my protection. And I'm traveling along the tapestry of the text. I'm in verse five where it says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you. Listen to how aggressive that is. Strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The text points to two things from which they needed protection in these ancient times, the sun and the moon. Can I break it down real quick? The danger of sunstroke in this region of the world was pronounced as the sun drained weary travelers. Therefore, shade provided protection. Follow me here. In the midst of oppressive circumstances, a respite in the midst of a fiery day, the songwriter seizes this simile to point out that in an atmosphere of adversity and aggression, God offers protection even amid circumstances we cannot control. That's a shout right there. I'm reminded here of the Hebrews' hasty exit from Egypt where God demonstrated the divine presence among them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Those pillars were not only a miraculous display of the eternal presence, but a miraculous means of eternal protection. Psalm 105 verse 39 tells the story, saying the Lord spread a cloud above them as a covering and gave them a great fire to light the darkness. God's providential protection covers light and night. In many ancient cultures, they believed that exposure to the moon would cause you to lose your mind. In fact, the English word lunacy roots in the word lunar. It is a Latin derivative uh, based on this idea. Here, the songwriter poetically balances rational fears with irrational fears, things you can see with things you cannot as an encouragement not to permit fears to dominate your life. Get this, because it is normal to be afraid of a car accident, but that fear becomes irrational if it means you never get into a car. It's rational to be careful. It's irrational to permit fear to paralyze your steps. Too often in our lives, fear trumps theology. That may explain why there are 365 verses in scripture that say, fear not. Do not be afraid of restriction or regression, hardship or setback, inequality or inequity, division or despair, twisted truth or fiendish lies. Do not be afraid. Why, preacher? Because our creator is our protector. The songwriter writes, as I said, poetically, but he also writes politically. This is going to make some of y'all mad, but let me show it to you anyway. Because Hebrew history is dominated by Assyrian aggression and Persian oppression. The Assyrians, a.k.a. the Babylonians, worshiped the sun god Shamish, while the Persians worshiped the moon god Mangha. So politically, subversively, this songwriter in Psalm 121 was providing the assurance to these pilgrims in peril that you don't have to worry about the deity, deception, or domination of the Assyrians or the Persians because your God is greater than them all. The sun will not smite thee. That's the Assyrians. Nor the moon strike thee by night. That's the Persians because your creator is your protector. Do not permit 
fear to debilitate you. Let God defend you. How do you want to say it, preacher? Let God work it out. Okay, Solomon Kinlock, my dear friend, who brilliantly leads the Triumph Church in Detroit and surrounding communities, building a spiritual beltway around my hometown, shared a story not long ago about a woman who used to catch the bus to her church in New York City. Others, more affluent than she, drove in to worship. But she had to catch the bus after catching the subway. Her clothes were not chic, but common. And yet, despite her lack of material means, she was one of the most expressive, exuberant, and excited people in the worship celebration. More than once in that sophisticated church, they reminded her that she was too loud and too excitable and that we don't do it like that up in here. Finally, somebody suggested that perhaps a way to calm her down was to publicly embarrass her by asking her to pray out loud, thinking that that would cause her in her embarrassment to stop being so outward in her expression of faith. Well, the day came, they made the ass, she responded to the request, they gave her the mic, and she said, let us pray. And she began to pray, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. They looked at her as she handed the mic back and said, what kind of prayer is that? To which the woman sagaciously replied, I learned a long time ago not to tell God what to do. I just give God the alphabet and let God write all the sentences. That's a shout right there. Yes, it is. The hallelujah goes after that because our creator helps us. Our creator keeps us. Our creator protects us. So let your creator work it out. Because finally, the text teaches, our creator preserves us. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. How long? From this time forth and forevermore. This pericope does not promise that we will be inoculated against irritation, guarded from grief, or shielded from struggle. But it does promise that no matter what happens or when it happens or how it happens, we can depend on Almighty God. Trials will come, but the Lord will preserve you. Viruses will spread, but the Lord can protect you. Pandemic may break out, but the Lord will keep you. Trouble may rise, but God will take care of you. Won't he do it? In 2 Corinthians eleven twenty five. Paul provides a riveting resume of what he had been through with the caveat that God had preserved him. He was beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, in danger from rivers, bandits, Jews, Gentiles, in the city and in the country, thirsty, hungry, cold, and naked. But through it all, somebody ought to type hallelujah, God preserved him. No wonder he could lift that incisive interrogative in Romans 8.35 and ask, what shall separate me from the love of God? He asked and then answered his own question, announcing nothing, nothing, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He was trying to tell us, my creator is my preserver. What anxiety can survive this assurance? What fear can extinguish this hope? What pain can overwhelm this promise? What problem can outlast this pledge? What difficulty can stop this development? What storm can sway this warranty? What struggle can stop this victory? What enemy can annihilate this activity? What mountain can block this movement? What hatred can hamper this triumph? What resistance can prevent this progress? Our creator is our preserver. That means we can travel without trembling, adventure without anxiety, pray without doubt, fight without fear, love without reservation, work without guarantee, 
and shout without shame because God is our preserver. It's not the locks on the door that make you safe. It's not the bars on the window that make us safe. It's not the alarm system on the house that makes us safe. It's not the ring doorbell or the video surveillance that make us safe. It's not the Glock, the nine, or the shotgun that make us safe. We are safe because God is a preserver. How do you know, preacher? Because God preserved Jesus Christ. He preserved Jesus through his struggles. He preserved Jesus through his suffering. And he preserved Jesus through his death. And on the third day, God raised him up and God gave him a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue should confess. And that's why we have to testify that we are more than conquerors because he loves us. We have to testify that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We've got to testify that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, that God causes us always to triumph in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody online who can thank God for preserving you? Is there anybody listening who can type and testify? Nobody but the Lord has kept me alive alive. Somebody post uplifted hands. If you know God can heal, if you know God can save, if you know God will deliver, if you know God will provide, if you know God will keep you post uplifted hands. Here's my song for the road. All my help comes from the Lord. He hears my song for the road. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. He hears my song for the road. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, perform miracles. He hears my song for the road. You, Lord, you are worthy and no one can worship you for me, for all the things you've done for me. I will worship you. Here's my worship. Here's my song for the road, for every mountain. Hey, hey, hey. You brought me over for every trial. Yes, you've seen me through for every blessing. Hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. Do you have a road song? Sing it. Shout it. Type it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life is a journey, my friends, and none of us are equipped to take it without God. I'd like to extend an invitation to you to commence or cultivate a relationship with God by accepting the free gift of grace that God offers us through Jesus Christ. It's not difficult. It's as simple as ABC. A, admit that you need God. B, believe that God sent Christ into the world to provide salvation for humanity. He died on the cross, but God raised him on the third day from the dead on our behalf and C, confess it with your mouth. Right now, there's an entire team of welcoming, loving, praying people on standby in our prayer room who would love to pray, talk, counsel with you so that you can commence or cultivate your relationship with God. All you need to do is click on the URL on the lower third of your screen, or even more easily scan the QR code in the corner of that lower third, and it will take you directly there. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your song for the road. Jesus Christ is the message.
in the music of our lives. Won't you accept him right now? I can remember my mother told me Don't let no one speak for me When it comes down to his blessings No one can give him praise for me but me He'll always come through for you Blessing that he's given me, I don't know. know. Even if I had a thousand times, I need more. You should know what he's done for me, he can do for you. You can tell him, let me tell him. What the Lord has done for me. Now, let me tell you about what he did for my mother. And at the same time, took the load of me. Just when the doctor said that it was over My God, he stepped right in and gave a back to me He'll always come through for you That he's given me, I don't know. know. Even if I had a thousand tons, I need more. What he's done for me, he can do for you. Yeah. Out of hopeless situations. And all those who trust in him, put all your faith in him, they will never be. Woo! Everybody listen. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Woo! I'm telling you. Every day of my life. For me, he's a healer, he's a provider. Yeah, every day of my life, he made the sunshine, made it, made it right. For my God to solve, you should, you should know him like I know him. Yeah, 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 yeah,
thank you. I thank you. I repeat, I thank you for your amazing support. Your faithfulness and your generosity are a source of real inspiration to all of us here at St. Paul's. I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to stand in agreement with you. I'd like to pray for you as you prepare now to worship God by giving your tithe and giving your offering. Let us pray. God of music and melody, it is to you that we sing and for you that we live. You are the source of our strength. You are our sufficient help. No matter what happens, when it happens or how it happens, we can always, always, always depend on you. You are the center of our joy and the provider of our peace. Today we bring our tithe, 10% of the 100% that you have provided to worship you. We give our tithe as an offering of thanksgiving, as one stanza in the song of our experience. Bless the gift and the giver in the awesome and amazing name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all the people said, amen. Let's give now, even as we rejoice in the music. I get your hands up, I get your hands up, get your hands up, come on. I wake up in the morning, God is there. In the sun, or even if it's storming, God is there. Listen, even in a crowd, when you're by yourself come on he's still there there's no place no place in the world the hell let me go without him come on cause he's everywhere come on y'all I can't live feeling good and everything's going well come on oh, come on oh, yeah he's still there he's still there and I'm grateful for the love you give to me see God you've always been there Jesus in my time of need and the truth is I come on, I come on. No, I can't live. I can't live without you. I can't live. See, I just can't live without you. I come on. No, I can't live. I can't live without you. I can't live. See, I just can't live without you. Check it. Do you remember when your heart was in two? It was right there. Just to hold you. Are you grateful? I come on, well, are you grateful? Hey, hey, well, I remember when the bill was too late somehow. God just seemed to make a way, and I'm grateful. You see, he didn't have to do it, but I'm grateful. See, he didn't have to do it. I can't live. No, I can't sleep. No, I can't move. No, I can't live. See, I just can't live without you. Check. I can't eat. No, I can't sleep. I, I can't move. Oh, I can't breathe. Without God, I can't walk. 
Without him, I can't talk. I can't think. Without you, I'm too weak. Oh, can't eat. No, I can't sleep. Hey, I can't move. I, I can't breathe. Without God, I can't walk. Without him, I can't talk. I can't think. Without him, I'm too weak. I can't live without him. I hope that you were blessed by this worship celebration today. I know I was. Before you scroll away and we receive together our benediction, let me give you our checklist. Number one, would you share this stream with your family, your friends, and your network? Somebody you know needs this word from the Lord. Our goal every week is no less than a thousand shares, but we need your one to make that number. Number two, would you download our GPS document so that you can discuss this message with your family and your friends wherever you are? It's great to hear the word. It's better to apply the word. And then thirdly, for all of you who would like, we are planning our first in-person worship celebration in September. So please visit our website so that you can find out our proposed guidelines as well as have the opportunity to register for our first in-person service. We're praying about this and believing that God is going to allow it to happen. We miss being together and long for that opportunity, but we only want to be together if we can be together safely because your safety is our number one priority. So please visit our website for more information in that regard. Would you share our benediction with me now? It's printed on the screen. Let's share it together. I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently love genuinely, live authentically, and sing passionately because all your help comes from the Lord. God bless you real good. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. The wait is over. On Sunday, September 12th at 10 a.m., St. Paul's Baptist Church will resume in-person worship services on our North Campus on Creighton Road only. We'll have announcements on the reopening of our other locations in the future by the grace of God. So visit myspbc.info slash reopening for more info. Connect with us for one-on-one -on -one prayer or counseling at any time during our Sunday morning worship experience. We'd love to talk with you. Join us in our virtual prayer room at myspbc.info slash prayer room. Our celebration of Life Stage Summer continues this week as we celebrate SMV. Please join us as we celebrate Imagination on August 29th. Every member has a mission. Take the next step towards yours today. Don't know where to start? Let us help you on your journey by taking a 10-minute assessment to learn and understand your gifts for your mission. Develop your gifts through our online bootcamp training and celebrate completed missions and find new ones. Lead, connect, and serve to build relationships within your team. This is how we win when you serve. Take the next step towards your mission today. Learn more at myspbc.info slash myfit. Our community fresh food distribution will be held Friday, August 27th at 29 Elm Street in Petersburg from 2 to 4 p.m. at 4247 Creighton Road in Henrico from 4 to 6 p.m. and 700 East Belt Boulevard from 4 to 6 p.m. This is in partnership with Anthem Health Keepers plus Feed More and NIA Community Development Corporation. No registration, just drive up or walk up and pick up. For questions, email outreach at myspbc.org to volunteer. Thank you for your time and attention. 
This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.